Hammer's strike iron. The clinging sounds of Pharaoh's rubble tingle the ear. The noise is deafening. Clusters of thick, dark smoke emanating from the burning of waste electronic products and other scrap material fill the atmosphere, blaring vision and causing teary eyes. Agbogbloshi, a slum in the center of Accra, Ghana, has achieved notoriety as one of the most polluted slums in the world. The Blacksmith Institute, renamed Pure Earth in 2015, rated the Agbogbloshi Iwe site as among the top 10 most toxic sites in the world. Early settlers arrived in this area in 1981. It has since attracted economic migrants from various parts of the country, typically northern Ghana, who seek employment. Another of Old Fadama's pool factors is its low cost of living. The neighborhood has some of the cheapest rent in the city. Despite having little to do with the generation of e-waste, these low-income inhabitants live the closest to the city's e-waste hub due to the ecological distribution of Accra's general waste management system. Both young and old are engaged in one task or the other in the chain of activities associated with the scrap metal business. From morning to evening, they search through what has notoriously been named as the world's biggest dump site for electronic waste materials, looking for worn-out computers, television sets and other electronic waste to extract copper and other valuable materials. It is what they do for a living, but first it feeds them, then kills them slowly. Twenty-two-year-old Abdallah has been working on this dam site for the last six years. He migrated from the northern part of Ghana to Accra in search of a better life. With a wife and three kids, this is the only sustainable way of feeding his family. This work is a deeply dangerous because the work, how you are burning the copper, hit the inside. So when you burn finish, after if you go home, you take medicine before you sleep because you see pain with your body inside. His story is not entirely different from Abdul Hussein, who also comes from the north. Abdul is fully aware of the dangers he's exposed to, but says he has no other alternative job. Actually, I know say this one is dangerous, but this work, they are, we, if that one be our work, we can't do it, we can't change different work. But when we see some happy work can help us, then we we'll protect that place. We will get work when the smoke no good stuff anymore we like. What kind of help do you want? Uh, anyone. If I get anyone I like. Or if I want if I get different life, uh, different work where I will leave this one. I can feel good doing it. This scrap metal dam site is not only a business center for dealers in scrap metals, but also a home for many people. They live and work in this dangerous environment, oblivious of the hazardous conditions they are exposed to daily. The most affected group in this area is children who engage in all forms of work that frowns on the loss of the country. Among the dealers in this scrap metal business are children who should be in school but who sacrifice their future and put their lives on the line. One such child is 14-year-old Memuna who has been selling sachet water. The laws of Ghana do not permit Mimuna to be selling water when she should be in school. No, I go to school. I don't. Papa said on his canteen in my back, I cry. I'm too bad, I cry. Then I'll hear you. I don't pure water. I don't want a bad cry. I'm not a sister. I'm not a sister. I'm not a sister. Memuna and her other female colleagues are exposed to all the ills of living in a community as dangerous as Sodom and Gomorrah, one of the most notorious towns in Accra. Although the laws of Ghana forbid Memuna from engaging in trade until she is of age, nobody seems to care. Child rights activist Bright Apia blames the situation on the failure of parents, society and the state. In every environment where there are no uh, guidelines uh, children especially the, male, the female child do so far more than anybody in that environment uh, the practice the behavior the conduct how people 
do things, how people even relate with them in terms of their sexual activities and abuses and all that, they suffer the most. So such environment is not even good to leave a child uh, on their own to, to, to define their own life in that context. Otherwise, uh, what we feel to give them as a state, that environment will provide it for them. Bright Appear says the time has come for all stakeholders to consider that education is a right and not a privilege. He believes such children must not be exposed to the kind of danger they are in and has asked the state to move in and rescue them since they represent the future of the nation. In, in such instances, it is the law that must work and then how we can enforce the executive to apply uh, the law and, and what, what we have to demand from them. I'm just waiting for a day where uh, uh, children would, would decide to take the nation on, to demand certain things that the state has failed to give them. Uh, it has happened in Cote d'Ivoire before, it has happened in other countries, Egypt and other countries before. So we have to take it up and then seek for certain intervention. And I think that I'm hoping that one day somebody will decide to take the state on to demand that it is because of your inability to uphold my my right that has made me get, get to the level in which I am. So I'm, I'm waiting for that day. But not everyone here is illiterate. 20-year-old Akologo Samuel is a JHS graduate. He has been exposed to the banning of electronic waste for five years now and is fully aware of the risk he is exposed to. Lack of parental care. Okay. So we don't get our that's why we are here. Who are your parents? Dad, North. Then the North. So do you get money from this? So, so. How much do you make in a day? This depends on how the work comes. Like today, like the CC, the rain, rain, there's no work. But if there's other days, to rain cannot rain, but work will not be around. So it depends on how the work is coming. It depends on how the people who are bringing the coppers so that they will bend and will pick the others. But do you realize that this can pose a danger to your eyes and your health? Yes. We know that. Do you have a problem with your eyes? Yes. What problem? It seems just like something starts. You know, see, uh, when I'm watching, I'm not watching the watch. The skin is entering inside our eyes. So that would be the problem. If they can help me so that if I will get the work, that I will do it and I will be very good on it. I would I will work. Would you want to go back to school? Yes. Without any protective clothing or tools to ply their trade, they handle the metals with bare hands and bend electronic waste in a very crude manner that emits poisonous gases into the atmosphere. For most of the young lads here, burning copper and selling is a livelihood for them. On a daily basis, they come here to burn these plastic materials and go sell them. But as you can see right there, the smoke that emanates from the burning of copper and other plastic materials poses a great deal of danger to their health. This practice leaves the area and its surroundings filled with polluted air that exposes the people to health risk and respiratory diseases. This is also a polyclinic. This is the headquarters of the Ashidu Ketika Submetro. We have um, six uh, main zones, English, Adenko, Bukum, Makola, Kolewakon and Aboboloshi areas, Kokomba areas. So this makes up the Ashedukateke sub-metro and um, we see both communicable and non-communicable diseases over here. Uh, for the communicable disease, the commonest ones we see it's malaria, typhoid fever, and when we have an epidemic, then cholera too becomes one of our top five cases that we see. And um, respiratory tract infections, these are the commonest cases that we see over here. The side effect of the scrap metal business is a major concern impacting on the lives and health of the public, considering the health and environmental consequences. Even though the place is very unhygienic, food vendors and other food sellers carry their wares around for the public to buy and eat. Also, livestock such as cattle, sheep, goats feed on the piles of refuse that are dumped around. These animals are later slaughtered and their meat sold to members of the public. In 
inside this dirty and toxic dam site, it's one of Accra's biggest markets, the Agbogloshi market. It's made up of women who sell all kinds of vegetables and food items that are exposed to the dangers of the environment. There are no figures to show the number of deaths that result from the dangerous lifestyle in this area, but it is certain that many lives are lost every now and then. A research by the Public Health Department of the University of Ghana on the effect of e-waste on respiratory function amongst e-waste workers engaged in burning at Agbogloshi in 2015 showed elevated levels of lead in the blood and nickel in the urine of e-waste burners. Analysis of the data was based on 22 e-waste burners whose data on heavy metals revealed the most commonly self-reported respiratory symptoms included easy tiredness and sore throat. The remaining cited cold, chest pains, excessive phlegm. Ben is a public health expert. You realize that they burn um, ties among other metals in order to be able to um, retrieve this copper among other metals. Now what happens is that once the burning is taking place, they are exposed to the fumes that comes from the burning. And one, that can actually uh, precipitate respiratory diseases. If the person even has asthma, it can be precipitated. Again, research has also brought out that all these fumes contain a lot of carcinogens. These are uh, cancer cells. They, they can actually bring about cancer. So once they have been exposed to all these things, their risk of developing cancers are high, respiratory diseases are high. Further studies have also been conducted to assess the impact of such environmental waste on maternal health. The results show pregnant women are at great risk of the activities of electronic waste burning. If a woman is pregnant and exposed to all these fumes, what can happen is that it can have effects on the child where it can affect the development of the child so you can give birth to a child who might be um, have congenital malformations you can give birth to a child whose weight is not normal okay you can even give birth to a premature child and all these things are associated to uh, with with exposure to these fumes so action network in 2002 calculated that nearly 500 million computers contain 287 billion kilograms of plastics, 716 million kilograms of lead, and 286,700 kilograms mercury, and over 50 constituents from the periodic table such as cadmium, copper, nickel, lead, barium, hexavalent chromium, and beryllium. E-waste, hence, has become both an emerging global environmental health challenge on the one hand and a tremendous business opportunity on the other because of the content of useful metals and other products generated. In Ghana, hundreds of tons of electric and waste products are imported from the Australia and Western Europe, the United States, despite clear laws that prohibit such acts. John Poiman is acting executive director of the Environmental Protection Agency. We have got the Act 917, that is the Hazardous and Electronic Waste Control and Management Act in place, where we have you know, put in measures to collect the eco levy, the eco recycle levy which is a levy that you pay when you are importing you know, electrical and electronic gadgets. And this is going to be put into a fund. You know, the account has been opened. And you know, the whole program was launched, you know, first of all, in August last year by the Excellency the President himself. And we actually started the collection of the eco levy in November. November 1st, we put in a system to start collecting. There have been some you know, teething problems with the collection because there was no you know, custom linkage Make sure that if you don't pay the levy, you won't clear your goods. So there have been some delay in that. If you do not produce an ECO certificate to indicate that you have paid the levy, then you cannot clear your goods, your electrical and electronic goods. It is estimated that about 500 containers of these second-hand electronic products are imported every year. Many of them do not last for a year. These importations go on even though a ban has been placed on the importation of some used merchandise such as mattresses, underwear and fridges, most of which find their way into Abusokai, the home of second-hand products. 
The Accra Metropolitan Assembly is acutely aware of the environmental health risk and hazards in this site, but they have been reluctant to tackle the problem. The EPA says since 2010, enough efforts have been made to discourage people from burning the electronic waste due to its harmful impact not only on lives but also the environment. There's no motivation to burn electrical and electronic waste now. Because as we are sitting down here, we have put in place a system where now they are buying the cables from them, even at a rate higher than what they get when they burn them. There are calls for major stakeholders such as the Environmental Protection Agency, the Customs as well as the Ghana Standards Authority to collaborate to enforce the regulations on damping of second-hand electronic waste on the market. Mr. Palman talks about recent measures that have been instituted. We have come a long way, you know, from 2008 when the you know, the first report started coming about uh, Bugloshi and how it is a very big dump site. We didn't, you know, the length and we have been working through it. You know, that's one of the major programs that we can say as an environmental protection agency we have been able to do. And me personally, I've been involved in this, you know, e-waste matter. Sometimes some of my colleagues, you know, call me by that nickname because it's something which we think we, we need to do. It's it such a menace and it was, you know, so embarrassing for Ghana. You know, that our name should be associated with such a very bad practice that, you know, we are one of the countries in that, in that area. So we have done very, we have worked very hard. And I think that, you know, what they remain is that they, they, they plant the agroglossary recycling, e-waste recycling facility. The model is right, at, right down there on the ground floor of our office. And when the president launched it in August last year, that model was also displayed. It's a very nice one. They are going to do everything. You know, even lorry ties will also be recycled into, you know, useful products. And then also refrigerators. The station in Abukuloshi. In fact, the land has been acquired and the model has already been developed. The Ghana Standards Authority has also expressed worry about the incessant importation of electronic waste into the country under the guise of second-hand goods. These activities are in clear violation of the country's laws. Professor Alex Dodu is executive director of the Ghana Standards Authority. What we have seen at Standards Authority definitely is worrying, and we, we, we don't hesitate to paint the picture as it is, that with cables, electrical products, LED lights, ions, hoovers, mowers, the situation is nothing to be proud of. Over the years, Ghana has become a dumping site for several of these. We have started enforcement at the port of entry, but our market surveillance tells us that the persistence of this on the market is high. At least 50% of all the products you buy will not meet our specifications. This means that these products, one, will drain heavily on the national grid. And the evidence is clear. Most of this will consume twice, three times, sometimes 10 times more electricity. People buy a 10 CD ion, sports in two days, they throw it off. But it's, it, it doesn't just go away. It's not biodegradable. It wouldn't go into the sun like a leaf. And the act is new, so it will take time for it to be enforced. There is however light at the end of the tunnel. The EPA, with support from government, has secured a facility at Agogloshi with funding to construct a multi-purpose waste recycling plant which will likely solve the current waste management problem. We will start the process of sending these things to the recycling plants. As we speak, the Standards Authority, we have in our possession five containers of electrical cables, which have been seen since 2017 till 2018. Ghana Revenue Authority, the Customs Division, as well as the various local authorities and the EPA and ourselves as GSA have agreed to denature them by recycling. So we are just cutting them off to the recycling plant and we'll publicly denature them. I think we are very clear on this. Ghana will not be a place for dumping electrical products and to the extent possible, and Parliament has given us full support and have assured us that when new legislation is needed to be given, that we should go ahead and clean up the market. There is a relentless war to rid the country of filth and the government's resolve to make Accra the cleanest city in Africa. If this feat is to be achieved, attention has to be given to the proper management of e-waste. Early steps must be taken to protect everyone from the toxic pollution. With the communicable diseases, we go on air, we do their best. We are going to do a DEBA to talk to them about um, how to prevent some of these fecal oral diseases, uh, how to prevent typhoid fever, how to prevent cholera, uh, how to keep themselves away from getting um, these diseases. 
We are also going to educate them on um, the communicable diseases, which we talk to them whenever we do a um, diabetes. We talk to them about hypertension. We talk to them about diabetes. We talk to them about cancers. With the issue of the arsenic poisoning and lead poisoning, that one it's a bit difficult because that is the occupation in which they find themselves. Humans and animals competing for electronic waste. The stench from this dam site is non shaken Until government steps in to find a more lasting solution to the management of electronic waste, all of us stand at great risk of danger. Music